Hello and welcome to Labor Lens. I am Sharon Ijasson. On this week edition of the program, we'll be focusing on the International Labor Organization Governing Board meeting, which just finished up at Geneva, Switzerland. We also have new stories for you. We will be right back. It all started during the administration of former President Muhammadu Buhari when the government evoked a no-work-no-pay policy against striking members of non-academic staff in public universities, which lasted for four months. Non-payment of the withheld salaries prompted members of the Senior Staff Association of Nigerian Universities, SANU, the Non-Academic Staff Union of Universities, NASU, and the National Association of Academic Technologists, NAT, at the University of Lagos, Unilag, to embark on the protests. During the protest, the university workers carried placards with various inscriptions about their demands. Speaking with TVC News, the leaders of the unions expressed hope that the federal government will order the payment of their withheld salaries. There was an agreement that was signed, apart from saying that they were going to pay those four-month salaries. They said there was a non-victimization clause that any of our members that partook in the, in the, in the, in the, in the strike was not going to be punished and was not going to be victimized. So by not paying us our formal salaries, I did not victimize us. Our appeal to them is that they should just resolve and pay us these four months with their salaries. As you can see them, they are with us because those are our strengths. Without them, we will not be here. They are in, we are, they are, they are in support, full compliance, 100%. That's why they are still here up to now. Strike is going to be on till midnight, 12 midnight on Sunday. They singled out one of the sister union and paid four month salaries, pending the remaining one. The SANU, the NAT, and NASU have not been paid a dime. And we went on the same agitation. President Bola Tinubu ordered the release of the withheld salaries, but only members of the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, got paid. ASU embarked on an industrial action in 2022, which lasted for eight months. The Nigeria Employers Consultative Association, NECA, says it is ready for the fourth edition of the annual job and employability fair. The job fair is scheduled to hold in May 2024. The theme for the 2024 job, career and employability fair is stacked the green economy, the new frontier in job creation and employability. During an exclusive interview with the organizing committee chairman, Rutimi Odishola, he explained that the event is part of NECA's efforts in reducing unemployment in Nigeria. The impact of ICT and, and the green energy, uh, uh, green economy in, in, the, in the theme of this year, that's really our target. We, we're, we're hoping that we can achieve all of this and we would be happy if all of this comes to fruition on account of the job fair that we're coming up with. Uh, by the way, I should mention that the job fair is scheduled for what, the 14th and the 15th of May. The 14th of May is a virtual session. This is the session at which um, participants, especially uh, job seekers, can get value-adding uh, you know, uh, interventions such as how to put together a, a, a good resume or CV, uh, the kinds of things that you look out for if you were you know, uh, in a job interview, uh, the opportunities ar areas that exist. Uh, you know, uh, depending on the focus that you have. So we're going to have facilitators taking, you know, uh, poten uh, participants through that. And then on the 15th is the, is the fair proper. And this is where, you know, all of the uh, sessions will come to, uh, uh, to bear and we will have exhibitions by, you know, uh, participating companies and, and sponsors as well. And that session will hold at the NECAR offices uh, in Lagos uh, at uh, Ogba. Delegates of the 11th Quadrennial National Conference of the Medical and Health Union have elected Kabiru Ado Soni as president of the union. Speaking to the theme of discourse of the conference, Nigerian health system in the era of economic downturn, the president of NLC, Joajeru, 
and other labor leaders spoke on the importance of healthcare workers and their role in national development. The Nigerian health system in the era of economic downturn issues, challenges and way forward is very apt. Therefore, not only aptly captures the objective realities that confront the health sector, but it's an urgent call to engage and resolve them for purposes of crafting a better future for the sector and Nigeria. The unfortunate socioeconomic situation confronting workers, and indeed the masses, have had deep consequences for not just provision of effective health care platforms to deliver services to those in need of these services, but for the professionals or workers practicing in the sector. The already poor equipment and general decay of infrastructure in the sector has worsened because of the economic situation. Why the numeration of workers have lacked, thus unable to meet the basic needs of workers in the industry. This delegate conference comes at a time of great national adversity and precarity. The state of our national economy and how it affects the health sector is of immense apprehension to many of us as stakeholders in the industry. This conference comes as a very critical time as our organization is faced with unprecedented challenges, especially given the troubled economic times and pervasive insecurity that besiege our country. This state of affairs informs the choice of the theme of the 11th National Delegate Conference of our Union, which is the Nigerian health system in the era of economic downturn, issues, challenges, and way forward. Comrades, the theme of our conference focuses on the challenges that confront us as the body bearers and decision makers of our great union. The crucial impact of the dire social, physical, and psychological dislocation unleashed by a paltry national economy is real both in our individual pockets and the union's treasury. The workers called on the federal government to be transparent in its activities as workers need to have a clear understanding of its policies. The issue of promoting decent work uh, in multinational enterprises is very, very apt and important uh, because of the fact that uh, decent work has four pillars. Uh, one of them is uh, uh, for workers to have social protection. Uh, the second one is promotion of social dialogue. Uh, the third one is actually uh, the issue of making sure that uh, workers are allowed to unionize and organize. Uh, so the four pillars of decent work must find space in every workplace, including the multinational, because you know that the multinational operate across borders. And so that's why there is a standard uh, by the ILO to say that uh, in all circumstances, uh, we must pro promote uh, the principle of decent work. So it's very, very important because workers need to have uh, life even after work. That's what it means. Uh, for instance, the first pillar which I mentioned, social protection extension to every worker. So wherever you work, whether in uh, multinational, in enterprise, even individual workers, it is expected that they should have some means of social protection. What COVID have taught us is the fact that uh, there can be some disruption and anytime there is disruption, uh, the fallback position for workers is to say that there must be a minimum uh, social protection floor in all circumstances and in all employment. So this is what uh, ILO have uh, continued to preach and promote and that's why uh, this particular issue is being advanced here. Um, I believe that in the world of work that workers should have expectations of their representatives not only in the workers group but in multilateral institutions like the ILO, that there will be a balance between um, commitment of countries to achieve higher productivity levels and better conditions for workers. And during the past nine days at the governing body, we have had the opportunity to express that. We have looked at um, building out um, a program of work around occupational safety and health, especially now that safety and health has become a fundamental um, right since last ILC. 
we have had a lot of discussions around the outcomes from an expert meeting that now see language around a living wage being incorporated into the language of the ILO in a more specific way and that's a big deal and that's a big deal because for some time there have been countries that have and employers in particular that have avoided any mention of a living wage and what is it is simply going to vary from country to country because it is that wage that allows you and your family to be able to provide the basic necessities and that will vary from country to country but as a concept it remains core to achieving decent work people go to work give of their best for a decent pay in order to be able to survive not as working poor but as people who can confidently and competently address the needs of their family. Of course, we looked at certain things um, around the war in pa uh, impacting Palestine um, and Israel and the ongoing conflict with Ukraine and Russia because in this house, we have to be concerned with those issues because they impact the world of work, they impact the cost of food, they impact access, they impact logistics in many ways. So we have to be concerned with them. And there are issues, I am here as a workers group representative, but I have colleagues even from my region in Guatemala and so on, who are suffering for standing up for the rights of people, decent work opportunities for people. They are marginalized, they are imprisoned there and their families have to become refugees because in their countries, democratization does not support people who speak out and stand up for workers. On the profile interview segment this week, I'll be speaking with the Governing Board Chair, International Labour Organization. He spoke about the 350th ILO Governing Board session, which just ended in Geneva, Switzerland. He brought us up to speed on several issues that concern workers, employers of labour, and other social partners. It's good to have you, Sarah, on the program. Your Excellency, Sarah. It's the third time that um, you would be chairing the ILO Governing Board meeting in the last six months. Can you share with us what your experience has okay, been? Okay, thank you. Yeah, indeed, it's been a, a wonderful experience, uh, not necessarily for me, but for uh, what uh, one has come to re represent the, the nation, uh, the, the African group, as it were, and then, uh, and indeed, to also demonstrate the fact that uh, uh, there is uh, someone at the helm of affairs that needs to bring together uh, all the pronouncements, all the proposals by all the groups, be it uh, the workers, be it employers, then government as it, as it were. So it's been quite a wonderful experience for me. As a person, there is this keen interest on digitization and um, how the world can unearth its potential. Would you want to share a bit of um, what you think should be done in that space for national yeah, development? Yeah, thank you. It's, uh, it's uh, quite uh, needful that we join the bandwagon. At present, uh, it's rather unfortunate that. Uh, uh, Across the world, you know, people are generally online, but then you find that at least the 2.6 billion people are offline, you know. So, uh, for instance, uh, in Africa, you know, you, you have a tremendous amount of people that are still not part of this process. So, we, there is nothing we can do, but this uh, goes to the heart of uh, what governments and uh, several organizations must be doing, if the worker, workers organization and uh, as well as employers, because really uh, they don't let us concentrate on uh, what uh, some call the dangers of uh, AI. You know, yeah, they, they may be dangerous here and there, but at least you want to concentrate on uh, the one, those areas to the extent that uh, it trends to our benefit is what we should uh, be uh, 
concentrating on at this at this point in time. But so we we need to begin to, to address you know, uh, the policies around it, and then the skill sets to actually uh, uh, provide the leverage for many people. You know, as we go into the, the let's say, AI technologies, looking at say, this and what we know, and it is the ILO has not uh, uh, kept, you know, regarding what constitutes every dissent about the work itself. So we, you, you also have to know that uh, you know uh, uh, the, the 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 platform economy is there for what, how do you account for the all the gaps that are there for now seized with finding in call uh, all groups together to at least understand the need for us to uh, address this aspect of decent work and uh, uh, you know they 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 also they also uh, tend to throw jabs at each other because okay if you say decent work so why are you asking me to to work till 9 p.m i started since morning you know is that decent you know but you see it, it tells uh, a, a lot of stories that look why you are doing it because you're doing it for the uh, for the purpose of getting everything untangled and different so but, but when it is now uh, within the ambit of uh, employer uh, worker relationship. That, that that's that's why we need to really to, uh, to speak more on that. And I do believe in the at uh, the next uh, uh, governing body, uh, this issue would come up, and uh, uh, the some are trying to push it forward. Some are trying to uh, make it go away. And so, but that's the beauty of uh, ILO itself, you know, because uh, it mimics the. Uh, the the globe itself, you know, it's uh, actually a micro aspect of what you see in the map. In the map. so the, the the discussions are not all get there. We all get there. Social justice is one aspect through more crazy per tripartite body towards ensuring that um, we have um, decent work. I, I, I must comment, uh, organization, but. Uh, Everyone that has really been involved in uh, uh, codifying uh, the concept of social justice, you know, be, 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 be that as it may, every pioneering uh, encounter the uh, number of challenges. But the dynamics associated with justice is such that we cannot but address it. A decent one is uh, uniform and it's not uni it's universal. What is uh, decent, you know, wage in country A? Would totally be extravagant in country B, you know, because uh, then the, you find uh, others coming up with all manners of, uh, you know, excuses as it were. That look, you no, know, it, it, it's it's obscene. You no, know? so uh, we you you live in a country where uh, you pay, for instance, a thousand dollars for accommodation, you know, every month. So. You, but other countries, uh, you, you pay maybe one tenth of that, less, much less. But I'm very careful to avoid certain words. You know, yeah, we all know uh, that uh, a laborer is worthy of uh, his wages. You know, so you you have to also justify the fact that this fellow comes comes around day in day out. You know, so what in in what way are you meeting the needs of uh, this worker? So. For me, decent work also means that you have put in your efforts, you know, as a worker, and then you have to be met, you know, at certain point by the employer. Uh, but you know, I'm very careful, you know, in uh, ascribing blame to anyone, and that is why it is important to have a body such as ILO where all this will be discussed, you know, and be, be, trust me, all the parameters are always considered. You know, be, 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 the fact that it's a tripartite body system that is being um, that is operated at the ILO. Can you tell, can you bring to fore um how we've enjoyed this um these, these measures or instruments um, while ensuring that policy is being made um meets up to world class standard in terms of labor labor laws? Sorry, sorry let me get to enjoy what uh, instrument. 
I completely compiled the questions the together. Yes, okay, I think the pragmatism is, is in full okay. display, of course, and um, that's what makes ILO um, unique compared to some other okay. Um, bodies. Okay. Um, can you tell us, um, as the chair of the governing board, how you've been able to use th that particular style? Um, how has it helped your leadership so far? As, as uh, an individual, you know, so uh, you used to uh, addressing only the government, but this, this time around, you have uh, uh, to your right, the employers, your left, the workers, or vice versa. Now you know, you now know that uh, their uh, needs must be taken on board, and then their views and whatever proposals are coming from both ends uh, have to be addressed pro properly with the steel, and then you, you now bounce the ideas off uh, the government. So see, as long as uh, you always have a government in the middle, yeah. We can we can't uh, do without government. Workers surely know that uh, whatever you know uh, to achieve, they have to you know keep talking to to government, and it is important for uh, for us to ensure that uh, uh, discussion must continue, negotiations and dialogues. You know, so when we keep those conversations open and we keep them, uh, uh, you know, uh, you you and I understand you know ourselves and then we know that uh, we are going towards a place where, but and we know there is nothing we can do without each other so we need ourselves but you cannot also say that uh, it is only workers and and government but we are the employers you know msmes where are they you know so you have to also ensure that uh, they are uh, involved in the conversations because without uh, uh, this free coming together uh, with the, 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 the one arm of uh, the, the, the tripartite uh, organization is missing, and then uh, you can't, uh, we, you cannot take any decision with that. So for me, it, it makes uh, a lot of sense to understand the nature and the tenor of uh, that organization, and uh, the applicability to uh, real life situation is there. You know, so you 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 just uh, have to know that uh, we have uh, different. Uh, uh, views of life, and then how to now channel that and to arrive at the at, at, at the solution. In fact, it uh, if I must if I if I must add, I think uh, uh, ILO is very distinct, you know, because uh, uh, it is totally different from any, if not all of uh, UN organizations. Uh, so you you you. I, I do I do make fun of office that perhaps you need to you need to teach other UN organizations uh, a lesson or two about uh, how we arrive at uh, uh, solutions and how uh, we come about. Finally, talk what has been your institution. But, but you just said that it's a difficult topic. Uh, it's actually a bit difficult, but the uh how uh how it was received you know by a group and the other group you know yeah yeah i i i see a lot of uh tension around for now uh the the atmosphere is a bit toxic but look we, we're talking about uh uh an issue as far back as you know 1986 so but but there are other other about it you know to to, to ensure that uh, Everyone, you know, we all feel a sense of belonging, you know, as a member of this uh, global body. So uh, I do believe uh, that uh, in its entirety, you know, there is nothing wrong, you know, in uh, finding uh, an agreeable solution. Yeah, as I said, uh, the the atmosphere is a bit toxic for now, but uh, and we'll continue with that this afternoon, uh, incidentally. So I and that's why I wouldn't want to say much about it, but to say that. Uh, that it is in the interest of everyone. Uh, they say no, no, no child left behind. You know, so to ensure that uh, we we get uh, the max, maximum benefit from the organization to which all all of us have uh, uh, been committed to uh, in the last uh, uh, how many years now? Nineteen nineteen. Yeah. So 
So it's uh, so we're uh, three decades. Let's just leave it at more than three decades. Exactly, exactly. So this is a uh, wonderful organization that uh, must always find solution to its many challenges. But the dynamics are there, are there to ensure that uh, we put in uh, the, those uh, missing pieces uh, and come to uh, a solution at the end of the day. Thank you very much for your time. It was an interesting conversation I had with you. And good luck on these so many other meetings that you'll be having as a chair. Thank and you, congratulations you. to Nigeria once again. Yeah, yeah. Con congratulations to Nigeria. And uh, also, I have to seize this opportunity to thank uh, uh, His Excellency President Bola uh, Ahmed Tinubu, uh, GCF. Uh, you know, bigger. ILO uh, 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 ask you to champion a cause, but it's another, you're representing the country for, for the, the, the largeness of his heart to uh, ask me to uh, uh, remain to uh, complete this uh, assignment. So I have to seize this opportunity. I, I, I know he's so busy. Uh, this may be lost in transit, but I, I just want to seize this opportunity to thank uh, His Excellency Mr. Ben, and then uh, 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 everyone from uh, the uh, Federal Ministry of Labor uh, to uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and uh, everyone that is involved. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs>